Hey everybody, what's going on? It's me, Average. Welcome back to our next full stack web development series. And today we are gonna be covering layouts and components. Looking back at all the videos, I'm surprised I didn't talk about this earlier as it's a pretty fundamental part of Nuxt and view in general. So let's get into it. In our app.view, let's actually start up our server. I believe I have to CD into it and Let's run our dev server. Okay, so here we have our site and I'm just gonna create a super simple quick nav bar, which for those of you who don't know, a nav bar is the navigation bar usually featured at the top of a site. So it's gonna be super simple and super quick. We're gonna make it in our index for now. I'm gonna start off with a nav and then we're going to give ourselves a logo and I'm just gonna call it website or not a logo, but just a, uh, a name. And then we're gonna have an unordered list here and I'm just gonna put a list item and it's going to lead to the about page. In this nav bar, I'm going to make it a flex container and I'm gonna do a justify between. Okay, so as you can see, we get some behavior like this. I'm gonna spice it up and make it look a little bit nicer, add some padding, add a, add a different shade of gray for the background. And now we have a super simple nav bar that doesn't really do a whole lot, but it is a feature of my site now. And what if I want this on other pages? Well, something I could do is copy this over to my about page. And now I have the nav bar featured on there as well. So if I navigate to the about page, you'll notice that it's here, but this isn't the best way to do it. And that's where components come into play. So in Nuxt, we can create a folder within our app folder called components. And within this folder, we're gonna make a new file navbar.view. Generally, I believe ESLint will complain about this, but they like when you use two words for a component name. So in this case, it will be navigation bar, and that's what we're gonna go with. This is a component. It's not actually a page on our site. So if we do slash navigation bar, we won't get redirected to a site. This is a component we can inject into our pages or other components if we please. So we're going to start it as we do with view components just by adding a template. Okay, and we're we're actually just going to copy our nav and paste it in here. So now we have a component that we can actually add into our site just by referring to navigation bar. And one cool thing about Nuxt is that a lot of it gets auto imported based on where you put things. That's why the directory structure is important in Nuxt. So we actually don't need this import statement at all. And then we can also add it to our index page. And now you'll notice that it functions the exact same way. We still have our navigation bar at the very top of our screen on both pages, and it's the exact same. I believe it's giving this uh, error because we initially ran this without having the components folder. So if we add that, we should no longer get that error because yes, now Nuxt recognizes this components folder exists and it will set up the auto import. So that's why we were receiving this warning here. That's no longer going to appear. The power of this is now we can actually just change our navigation bar however we please in one place. So we can do slash about uh, just give it a link, a Nuxt link as you would. And then for our website, we're also going to give it a Nuxt link as well. And this is just going to take us to the root URL, which is slash. And now when we go to our Nuxt page, if we click website, we'll get taken to our homepage. And if we click about, we'll go to our about page. That's pretty cool. This navigation bar is now reusable across all pages if we so please. I'm also going to be introducing layouts in this video, and it's a pretty simple concept. Essentially, we have some predefined layouts that we can apply to individual pages, or we could have a default layout if we know a lot of pages are going to look the same. So to do this, we need to create a new folder inside of our app folder and call it layouts. And let's create a file inside of our layout, and let's just call it default.view. This is technically a component that will accept a slot, which is typically used for web components to slot in external data inside of a component. So in which case this will be our actual page content. We can put our navigation bar here as well, and this will make it so it displays on all pages, meaning we can remove our navigation bar from our index and our about. However, when we go to our page, you'll notice it no longer appears. And the reason for that is because we need to go to our app.view and you see where our Nuxt page is. We need to surround this with a Nuxt layout. This will ensure 
sure that our Nuxt layout will use the Nuxt page as the slot as we created here. So it will slot in whatever contents within the layout right here, which means the navigation bar will now appear at the top. And if we go back, we'll notice that in action. Something we can do as well, if we want to create a secondary layout, we can do so. So let's create a profiles.view layout. This layout is going to be super simple and it's just going to have a div that takes up the entirety of the screen's width and it's going to have a BG amber black background so we can differentiate this. We're gonna give it some padding as well. Now you'll notice when we go to our profiles, it doesn't automatically get applied. We still have our default layout and that's because we actually need to tell Nuxt that we want to use this different layout on our profiles page. To do that, we use the define page meta method and we give it a object. This object will have a property called layout and we just need to feed it the name of our new layout, which in this case would be profiles. As you can see now in our profiles, we have our pop amber background, which is matching this. However, you'll notice that our content is gone and that's because I forgot a slot. So if you are making a layout, ensure that you've included a slot. There you go. Now you see the content right there. However, we don't really want this secondary layout. We want our layout for all pages to mostly remain the same. So we can delete that now. Much like a layout, components can also feature a slot. So if we create a new component, let's call it page title dot view inside of here, we can have a template because it is a component and we can give it a slot. Let's also surround it in a div and let's give it a class text 3XL. Let's also make it font black and let's do a BG gray 100 and also a text shadow 2XS. These are all Tailwind classes by the way. So now let's go to our index page and let's change our previous H1 to a page title. And let's also get rid of these classes here. You'll notice now when we go into our homepage, you'll see this hello world. I believe I set the background. I did not mean to do that. That's supposed to be text gray 100. And there we go. We have our page title and this can be reused. Any content that goes inside of our page title tag will display as part of the slot. In this video, I'm gonna be showing off one more feature for components and that is properties. Properties are very useful for passing information to our components. And we can do this by defining an interface, at least in TypeScript. We can say interface, and I usually like to call my property, whatever the component's name is, and then with the property suffix after that. Inside of here, we can give our own attributes that we would like to be able to pass in here. Something we could do is a color class, and we're going to make this a value of string. Now it's very easy to define properties. We can say const props equals define props and then give it a type. Our type is page title properties and then just give it parentheses. However, we want our color class to have a default value. So to do so, we're gonna say with defaults and then we enclose our previous defined props, but we also are going to pass an object and this is going to be our default value. So for color class, we can give it a text gray 100 and this will be our default class. We can also make our color class an optional field so that we don't need to add it every single time to our page title. And now we can remove our text gray 100 from up here. And we're going to do what is called a binded attribute. In view, you're allowed to give it a binded attribute, which is basically just a pointer to a variable. So for example, in this class, I wouldn't be able to say props.color class, that wouldn't do anything. But because I'm using this binded attribute, which starts with a colon, we can put it inside of here and we will now be able to pass a color class to it. And so if we go to our page, you'll notice that it is white. However, in our about page, let's give a page title here. If we navigate to our about page, you'll notice we now have a title that looks a lot like the index's title. However, what's cool is we can provide a color class and we can say text red 100. And now our text on our about page will be slightly red. And to actually feature this a bit more, we're gonna make it a darker shade of red. So it's more obvious. That's gonna be it for today's episode, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more.